and yeah, we're gonna be playing um, Link's Away, uh, blah, blah, blah. The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. You guys know this game, it's a Game Boy Color game. Um, original release, I guess, like in 1980, uh, 1998. And um, yeah, um, the speedrun is like not that glitchy, rather a normal playthrough, but rather than quick. Let's hope we're gonna do this uh, quick tonight. <laughs> and yeah, um, Altwisto, you there? Jangler, can you hear me? Oh yeah, okay. Um, so like we uh, we're gonna have like some side commentators. I got my buddies Jangler and Altwisto with me, um, both of uh, Oracle of Season speedrunners as well. And um, I think also already uh, big shout outs to Zelda Speedruns and Tresco. Thanks for setting up this amazing event. And um, yeah, I guess without further ado, we're going to start the run. Let's see where we're going with this. So um, I'm going to give a short countdown for Tresco so you can start the timer. And we're going to start in five, four, three, two, one, go. So at the beginning, it's uh, you spawn like into this world, um, and um, yeah, we're like uh, stranding over here and getting picked up by Din, which is the Oracle of Seasons. Got to talk to all these guys to like um, make the cutscene roll forward. Oh, and. Also to Din, nice little cutscene here. Gotta start mashing A once the screen stops. And like the first two minutes are basically just mashing A and B to get through the text boxes as quickly as possible. And yeah, so like we we stranded in this um, land, which is, uh, what is it called? Holodrome or something? Holodrome. Yeah, Holodrome. Also, Ultristo, hey. Hello. Uh, I don't, nice I don't know what went wrong there, but nice to hear you again <laughs> and there's suddenly Onox appearing in form of a whirlwind some or like tornado and he's capturing Din and blasting us away to his side and he's putting Din first into some chains and after that into a crystal Kind of seen that in other Zelda games, I think. <laughs> I mean, that was the whole thing in Link to the Past, was just ladies and crystals. Yeah. This time, only one lady and one crystal. Nevertheless, we have to rescue her. Mm. And now, since Din is the Oracle of Seasons, the Temple of Seasons is gonna, like, drop down into the underworld, Subrosia. And that is going to make all the seasons getting twisted, as you can see here. And that's basically like most of the thing, like the biggest technique in Oracle Seasons. Uh, you know, each screen can look different depending on what season you are currently in. And, and um, like, for example, in winters, uh, lakes can be frozen, so you can walk on ice there. Or... Um, in autumn, in fall, there's going to be like uh, leaves laying, laying over some pits so you can walk over them. So you kind of have to use that technique to advance uh, through some puzzles and throughout the game. Classic RNG here. And yeah, so right off the bat we're going into the, I think it's called Hero's Cave, to get our sword back. Just like some basic movement here, hope not to drop into the pit. Not cutting the corners too closely. And I hope I also don't pull an LEDX, <laughs> which is like doing a soft reset instead of uh, save and quit. So we're gonna use save and quit and we're gonna do save and continue and then do a soft reset to spawn like to do do or uh, like warp us to the entrance of our rooms again of dungeons again i'm gonna use that a few times throughout the run no Oops. and we're getting our sword which is like a wooden sword i guess Mm. 
We're also gonna like um, improve it later to the level two sword and fingers crossed I'm not getting winter. Nice. <laughs> Fall. So like um, if you get winter, I guess you guys can explain more about that. So uh, the town is special. Piles of snow force you to take detours to the south of them because they're blocking off entire sections. The the ring shop, which is just one screen uh, west of here, uh, this is entirely blocked by snow. So you need to go down, one screen down, one screen right, and then one screen up uh, to get to the Maku tree. It's not very nice. Yeah, it's like an eight to ten seconds detour, I think. Um, yeah, so we got to the Maku Tree there. It's like a body which tells us where to go, and he gave us the key to the first dungeon. Every time I enter dungeon, my right foot is like sort of getting an impulse because like I have my, I have a USB uh, paddle to actually split. <laughs> Not have to don't don't have to split today. So right foot stays calm. <laughs> Sorry, is my mic good? Uh, it's a thing a little low, but should be alright. It's weird. I can turn it more. Change. Yeah, and we got like uh, these little card rights here. Shoutouts to the Minish Cap, we're gonna see that later. Luckily they fixed that in the Minish Cap and they made the cards way faster. The speed they are actually supposed to ride in, but the other side is you got like some small break here where you just kind of like breathe through and relax a little bit till like the action is happening again. I mean, in Minish Cap, you can't wildly stab Keith on on the cart, so you can't do that. That's right. It's Gonna my get like part of the cart rides in this game. <laughs> Sorry, it's my favorite part of the cart rides in this game is just wildly slashing away. <laughs> yeah. Cool, fun little thing in that game. No, screw it. I wanted to have that heart, but going risky now, I guess. So we got a first mini boss coming up, getting hopefully as a fairy before that. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a quick kill. Yeah, it was almost optimal fight here. Like, there's a setup so you can hit him two times with a bomb, but I was always too lazy to figure that out. That's how you get world records in this game, being too lazy to figure stuff out. And we're getting our next item, which is the seed satchel. Contains amber seeds, which are like the magic powder in LEDX, you know, like they make fire burn things down, you know, like obstacles and stuff, light torches, what have you. And we're gonna oh, start doing some RNG manipulation in a bit to kill all enemies here and then do a hard reset. And like I did some slashes there to ro roll the RNG to a certain value, so the next room should be always the same. Enemy pattern movement here. I'm also gonna manip these hands so they don't get in my way. Because like they're spawning in the direction you are facing. Or slash walking. And let's hope I get it here. So this boss is Aquamentus. Those of you who played Zelda 1 will notice that uh, it's a throwback to that game, as are a lot of the bosses in this game. Um, 
And the bad thing about Aquamentis is that it can randomly charge past you into the wall and then remain airborne for like 7 or 8 seconds during which you can't attack him at all. So part of the RNG manipulation is making sure that he just stands there so you can slash him and he doesn't uh, charge you and fly. Mike is fine now, by the way. Thanks. Good to know. I hope I didn't mess up my RNG pattern here, because I don't know if I slashed Aquamentus one time too much. Octorok is moving down though, so I should be getting fall if I enter the town. Okay, I got fall. That looks good. Like Jangler said before, um, it's like a different season every time you enter the town, but since we like manip the RNG values um, towards basically everything that happens in this game, um, you can like sort of double check on the seasons you're getting when you're entering the town, whether you are still on the right RNG pattern. Both guys facing up, that's good. You also have to like be careful in screens with enemies, so you always have to walk in a specific way there, so you, because every enemy movement is basically rolling the RNG. Every sword slash is doing that as well. And you use like the pitch of sword slashes to figure out on which RNG pattern you already are. So like these sword slashes are um, all pre-planned to um, manipulate the RNG so you get like the value you want to have. Which is like in this little cutscene, the hide and seek sequence always is like the shortest sequence because like there are different patterns and always get the shortest sequence there. If we don't mess it up. <laughs> oh, and you also collect some rupees along the way. I won't be leaving them because I'm doing something called uh, Hard Ring Minip, which also gives you like some more rupees you're gonna need uh, later to fight Blano. Um, but yeah, I'm just like doing it to be like to not mess up the manipulation. And we're entering the underground world, Sabrosia. Still carrying along the RNG. Yep, and we're gonna be carrying this on for a while, but luckily there's nothing in Sabrosia that rolls the RNG that we will be visiting. So it'll be pretty straightforward. The only thing to watch out for is when we do the save and quit, because every frame you're on the title screen increments the RNG. Yeah, you have to mash pretty fast there. Mm. Also, you shouldn't accidentally slash your sword because that rolls the RNG forward as well. Also, shoutouts to Jangler. Um, he, he and like Seamaster found that RNG manipulation we're going to be doing up until the entrance of Dungeon 2. So it's like a pretty neat thing to get like consistently good runs into the speedrun. Getting uh, the Rod of Seasons in the center of the Temple of Seasons, which is like dropping down to the Underworld of Sabrosia, and also getting our first season for the Rod, which is going to be winter, so we can always change it to winter while standing on tree stumps. I did like one accidental slash that I hope that's not going to mess up the RNG. Yeah, there is some leeway with the uh, manipulation, um, just built in because we have to have it in case you slash extra, in case you spend an extra frame on the title screen or so. So when Bamboo gets back into the overworld, he's going to slash a few times to figure out where he is in the RNG state and to yeah, like get on the to, right value. Yeah, you have to dis distinguish the pitch of the sword slashes to know like the RNG value where you are. I'm gonna do that now. Oh, that's alright. Should be fine, I guess. Oh, perfect talk to Soka. He didn't have to move down or up. <laughs> the neat little things in a speedrun. Yeah, we Did got you get the, um, the fast ember seed on the tree? 
before talking to, no. talking to him the first time. Oh. Didn't get that. <laughs> That's also pretty neat. I get that quite often, though. So, this part of the game we call Moblin Road, because of all the moblins on it. Um, and the way they spawn and move, etc., is all RNG, like most of the enemies in this game. So, it can be pretty nasty, but since we're manipulating the RNG, they're all just gonna walk out of our way. Yeah, you have to move tight in, like, in a certain way for screens, you always get the same RNG pattern there. And I was a little too fast in that one screen, so I'm gonna dig here one time in that snow pile, and it's always gonna be a heart, and that is, like, gonna put me right back on the right RNG, so that's, like, pretty cool to have some neat little backup strats there. Hope I can carry along the RNG to entrance of dungeon 2 slash twice here. Like, especially in rooms with enemies in them, you have to be tight on your movement. Okay, good. Gonna slash till I hear a... Uh. Okay, so that was like a high, mid, low, high pattern there. I have to recognize that. I was actually really, f uh, really behind with... Uh, my sword slashes down. <coughs> Which basically just means you got through the title screen quickly, right? Uh, yeah, and I, um... Okay, nice, I got it. Um... Yeah, like, um... It's, like, not really optimized what I do there. <laughs> so, like, maybe I should, um... Intentionally wait a little bit more on the title screen. Ooh. Okay. Um, but it's like small optimizations. As long as you get it done as I just did, you're totally fine when it comes to the uh, to the run. Also, pr pretty neat thing you, if you have like a visual cue for the bombs explosion, and you can um, and you know exactly when to pull up the next bomb after you threw a bomb. Also, this is not uh, the extra bombs are actually hurting me. <laughs> I guess like LEDX or LA is one of the few Zelda games where bombs doesn't hurt yourself. Bombs don't hurt yourself. Yeah, the oracles in general are, they look very similar to LEDX, but they're less forgiving in terms of, uh, for example, your hitbox is bigger in this oh, game, yeah. so enemies will hurt you from farther away. Also, enemy hitboxes are bigger. Your hitbox is bigger, enemy hitboxes are bigger, and you basically got zero iframes. Also, a reason why I'm gonna pick up a little safety item later in the game. So yeah, about Dungeon 2, I guess there's nothing that much to tell. We got like the bracelet, which lets us lift things. Surprise. And um, which also the makes console. you push around these rollers or whatever you call them. I hate those guys. Like, and especially with room with keys being there, it's like kind of nasty. But we got through all right. Keys shout are really nasty this, in this game. Yeah, really. The patterns are so unpredictable. And shoutouts to this mini boss. Um, like the best his... mini boss you get. Yeah. <laughs> kill it before it even shows up. Yeah, only working in the Japanese version though. But we're gonna taunt him at the end. So that was, that was what he was supposed to look like. Bye bye. <laughs> His hitbox is accessible before he even spawns, so easy peasy. We'll see him later uh, during the final, not really dungeon, like mini dungeon for the final boss. The gauntlet. Can't cheese him there, <laughs> unfortunately. No, if only. So like this room with the platforms is kind of annoying because like the keys can get in your way. Okay, they didn't. And 
we got the first boss, no, no, the, the second boss coming up, which is Dimitri's older brother. <laughs> I have to throw bombs into his mouth so he blows up and I throw him into his spikes. Pretty easy, but also... It's a neat little uh, change on the classic Dodongo fight. Instead of yeah. just throwing a bomb at him, you gotta throw him. Yeah, I'm gonna do a safe strat here though, because like he was standing really far to the right, and don't want to mess up this boss and get an extra cycle. Well, this was pretty flawless so far, so should be like a 1930 or something. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do after this dungeon, I'm gonna. Do a hard reset to uh, set the RNG value back to zero. And then I'm going to do some spin slashes to manipulate a drop from Maple, which is like some witch, which uh, is going to... Uh, I have to focus on the trick right now, sorry. <laughs> I guess we can explain it afterwards. You're gonna get yeah, uh, Maple. She's gonna drop a ring. Should be appraised later. All right, now you can talk. Um... So Maple is a an event that periodically happens after you kill a certain number of enemies. So you have to make sure you kill enough enemies in Dungeon Two. And then she runs into you. You both drop some items. One of the items she drops is a ring. And because of the way we've manipulated the RNG. We know what that ring is going to be. It's going to be a heart ring, which will regenerate hearts periodically based on how far you walk, which is incredibly useful since this, since this game loves to hurt you. So it's, I think it's about um, like 90 seconds extra to get the heart, but you end up uh, saving probably about that much time in terms of not having to go out of your way for hearts. You can like walk through enemies. Oh, luckily it's not apartment. even that much. I did a comparison, it's about 47 seconds. 47 seconds, okay, that's yeah. great. And you still can get world recce with that, so... <laughs> and uh, shoutouts to Dragon Co, dying is slow, so it helps you avoid dying. <laughs> yeah. Shoutouts to our body dragon. He did like, if you're interested in speedrunning this game, he did a really nice tutorial on all the shenanigans which are, which are like happening right now, which we can't explain at all, but which are like, it's, it's like small optimizations, small manipulations. Um, since I said there are not going to be that many glitches in this game, like if glitches at all, rather skips than glitches, I think. Also, if you're trying to RNG manipulate this screen with the butterflies in here, also rolls the RNG by one per frame. <laughs> so, like, there are some screens which are, like, not that uh, feasible when it comes to RNG manipulations. And if you're using, like, an emulator like Bisorg or something, um, you can use a RAM watch to actually uh, watch the RNG value out of the RAM of the game, so you can use that to figure out strats and stuff, that's pretty cool. But um, also if you were asking yourself some, uh, something, this is actually played on console though, so no, no RAM watch or RNG watch whatsoever, we have to rely on our instincts when it comes to RNG slashes uh, on sword slashes. That's also why I like always need some quiet time. But uh, when I do like my nips with the sword, so I can actually hear the sword slashes and uh, distinguish the the pitches of the sword slashes, so I know where I am RNG value wise. So you just saw our first animal partner, Ricky. There are three in this game. There's Ricky the kangaroo, Boosh the flying bear, and Dimitri the Dodongo. Right? Dodongo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Ricky makes a nice noise, but he's really annoying to move with. Um, uh, people usually have... 
People usually have a favorite and least favorite uh, animal partner. Ricky's usually the least favorite. <laughs> yeah. Moosh is my least favorite, though. I love Moosh. Nah. It's just like... I just, it's, 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 just it's, it's just his attacks, you know? Like, ah. He's super awkward to, to uh, attack. Nice, I'm team really nice, nice movement-wise, though. Luckily, we only have like a small cutscene later with him. So, like, also noteworthy, we picked up the Pegasus seats, which is um, which we can drop in front of us, and they will boost our movement speed by 1.5. So, once we get the Pegasus seats, the game is also getting a little more fast-paced, which I really like because up until this point, this was mainly mo moving through the old world. Um, not too much happening there. Just trying to walk correctly, doing your menus correctly and as fast as possible. I actually yeah. have a pre pre planned menu route throughout this game, but I'm kind of rusty, so I'm gonna probably mess it up up in Dungeon Five somewhere. So the game really opens up once we have the Pegasus seeds, which make you which make you move faster, and the next dungeon item, the Rock's Feather, which lets you jump. So, combining those things lets us jump over some things that the game did not intend us to do. Yeah, sadly they nerfed the Rocks Feather compared to LA or LADX a lot. It was way cooler in LA or LADX where you could jump like really far when going diagonally. But you can jump upstairs. <laughs> we got like a small piece of something something here, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, maybe you can guys, you guys know more about that. So I think that was the square jewel. There are four jewels that you need to get to get into uh, Dungeon 6. Uh, and during the process of just going out uh, around our normal business, we get those. Just so that we can get into Dungeon 6 later. So right here, um, Bamboo dug up the star ore, which we need. It can be in four places. Uh, but uh, we think that game developers are probably sociopaths because if you don't know where those four places are, you just have to dig up the entire beach until you find it. Yeah. I've done that quite a few times playing through this game. Digging up hundreds of spots without finding it. Talking to Rosa twice because why not? <laughs> is that even Rosa? I think it is her, right? Because yeah, it's Rosa. Right. It's guy with bow. Yeah, the bow. And she has a key, uh, not only to unlock these doors, which is saw there, but also to unlock a door, which is accidentally also in the Temple of Seasons, <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> She has the key to that door. It's got a nice little key that unlocks everything. Yeah, it's a magic key. The magic If only you could take her to the overworld. You could skip so many keys. Yeah. <laughs> you could bring her along. But she's gonna get lost after we leave Sabrosha again. So we're getting... What is it? Summer gonna I guess. So each season makes some different changes in the overworld. Um... Winter, which we got the first time, makes snow piles appear, and it makes uh, trees lose their leaves, which makes us able to walk around them for some reason, and it makes uh, water freeze over so we can walk on that. Summer makes... Uh, the main thing is it makes vines grow, so we're going to be able to climb up some vines into the next dungeon. And it dries out lakes. Some lakes. Does nothing aside from that, I guess. Everything is looking a little reddish. <laughs> <laughs> jump back into the key. Yeah, Jesus. 
Nice tech tights. Yo, nice tech tights. If they move out of the way, it's nice you can just walk through there. So I'm gonna change it to winter and then to summer. Gonna do like a menu there uh, on the fade out, so like to save a few frames, I'm gonna enter dungeon free. Which is called uh Poison Mon Slayer. Slayer. Poison Mon Slayer. So normally you use the shield to bump over these enemies. You can also just use the shuffle. I don't know if the designers didn't want people to get stuck because they didn't have the shield or what. Yeah, your, your shield can be eaten by the lag legs. I mean, there's a there's a Deku scrub that sells you a shield just a couple screens south of the dungeon entrance, so... It was probably intentional, but... They thought backup strats. Yeah, and we manipulate these hands so they spawn out of our way so we can push okay. that pot around here. Okay. And the strat I use is pretty... in, uh, in, in Dungeon 1. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty yeah. difficult manipulation there. Um, if you fail it, then the hands grab you and you go back to the beginning of the dungeon. So, guys, um, do you... Bamboo, do you want me to get you nervous? Oh, yeah, do it. Uh, shout out to 1200 viewers right now. Oh, Jesus. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hope you're doing well and enjoying our close seasons. Especially shout outs to the US folks watching already. Like, I guess it's like. Six hours before our time here in Europe. Well, also, shout outs I mean, to our European folks. It's nice uh, early afternoon. Yeah. In there. At least here. I'm in. I'm in uh, in Eastern Canada. Thank you. Good, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty cool with a speedrun community being spread spread throughout all of the world but still like you know the game playing the games through as fast as possible and just like not talk about strats and games and tweaks and what have you like makes it really cool to be like part of a speedrun community yeah i love the community for this game yeah, cool. so we get like some precise chunks here okay Didn't yeah this is for the Rock's Feather Pegasus Siege shenanigans start. Oh god. Making it through here alive is like good enough for most of my runs. <laughs> 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 if you get it like done right, it looks so easy, but it actually is not. Like it's once again, the RNG patterns, the movement patterns from the bats from the keys there can screw you up big time. So just going through here, and if, if you do not do the hard ring manip, so you sometimes have to heal low hearts even harder. Yeah, you can just die in there. Especially in underground sections, it's important to match the start menu once you enter the section, so you can like delay the um, the platforms, the moving of the platforms, you know, like if you bring up the start menu there, it delays the platforms a little bit. So that was, with that trick, I was able to actually make those jumps across the platforms there. <laughs> Jesus. Scary. Yeah. You really don't want to mess with these guys. I like lost in my ward recce 20 seconds because I got grabbed by one of these hands. So rather take out your sword and do them. Was a little too fast already there. You know, like that's the thing when you manipulate these, you always have the feeling you gotta go fast, but rather do it calm and steadily. Um, yep. But yeah, can't go too fast. Not, not getting grabbed is good enough for me, ma marathon run wise. Like, like these are the first neat 
the time saves you are having um, compared to when you're not picking up uh, the hard ring that you can simply skip all fairies. And also in an RTA attempt, I would probably also skip some hard containers later in the game. Like, I like to skip two hard containers in the later dungeons. But I'm not gonna do that today. Like, rather bring through the whole, uh, bring, bring home, bring ho the run home safe. And because like the final boss fight uh, got like some quick strats where you take a lot of damage, and I don't want to screw that up. This damage boost. Redman in Twitch chat saying, "Ew, feather on B." People have <laughs> preferences for what uh, buttons items go on. I'm a feather on A person, uh, and it's interesting. In this game, you start with your sword on B, uh, and in LADX, LA, you start with sword on A. So the I've played designers the are mine. turned me into a sword on A person, or a sword on B person rather. Yeah, if you're a sword on A person, your feather usually goes on B. So. Uh... But it's personal preference. I was speedrunning LADX with having sword on A, so that's what I'm doing with the seasons as well. So sorry, even if the game developer's intention was to have it on B. <laughs> I mean, the in Link's Awakening, the sword on A was only because you got the shield first. Oh, so it always puts the first item on B, I guess. Yeah. I wonder why that is. In the, in the Ages Link game, it's interesting because you, you have a shield in your inventory. When you get the sword, I believe it's on B. But you already have a shield, it's just not uh, equipped. Yeah, shout out to my buddy Stana93. We did a linked percent, uh, any percent linked run at a marathon lately. Oh, we should have had a donation incentive for Sword on, <laughs> Sword on B. <laughs> <laughs> a bid war. Which button does the know. sword go on? If only you I told didn't... me before. Um, <laughs> can I make a quick donation? Yeah. Call? Sure. Um, so we actually met our first donation incentive. Which is the um, diminished cap to uh, glitch ex glitch, gl 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 <laughs> glitch exhibition, and that was sniped by our dear Tompa. Shout out to Tompa for a 67.50 donation. That said, bring on the glitches, you. <laughs> Shout out to Tompa. He made the test for this game. If you haven't watched the task for this game, uh, I highly recommend doing so. The stress for bosses in particular are just amazing. Oh yeah, manhandler cool kill. Yeah. <laughs> Easy every time. Um, so I was killing some enemies there to get a Pegasus seed drop and I got it. Actually twice, but I can only carry 20. As I just realized right now. <laughs> Um, that is good because like that allows me to uh, just um, spam some more seats on the way to dungeon 4. I also have like a, um, a preset. Also shout outs uh, to the Sword on B fans. This is like the one of the fewer parts where I have Sword on B because we got a swimming section up coming up and there you can only access your item on B, so that's why I have Sword on B. Um, so yeah, what I was about to say, I also have a pre-planned um, seed route. Um, so I really, um, I, I don't have to watch my seed count with the Pegasus seeds, but like I know on where I can waste seeds or drop seeds to walk fast and whatnot. So kind of actually use that to get through the dungeon as quickly as possible. So that's really helping to like have it sort of planned out before so you can more focus on this weekend. Also shout outs to our body Dren found like a cool strat in this room. Like maybe you guys can tell about like the casual way to do this. I actually don't even remember. So the casual way to do this is that you push those, I don't know, statues blocks together until you can hit them all with one spin attack. But Dren found out you can just ping one of them with your sword and then charge it and then the game will consider hitting them with the spin attack as all hitting them at once. And then you get the master's plaque, you give it to the master who lives in a cave up a waterfall, uh, handing out flippers to people. 
handing out flippers to people, right? But only if you get the Master Diver. Because he's a Master Diver and you have, like, to get an ID or some shit. <laughs> yep, you can only get the flippers if you've already climbed up a waterfall. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> not... But not without the help of our boy Dimitri. Which you I gotta guess prove that you're able to befriend him. things that can climb waterfall. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, that's that's more accurate. Also, um, shout outs to the guy who finds a way to not trigger this cutscene here. I know Dragon Co is looking at trying to actually get the feather back with the boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so like you jump into these guys, they bump into you, and they steal your feather. These assholes. Sorry, but um, yeah, they give you a, 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 an ore instead. Which is actually a really deadly weapon, as we found out. <laughs> yeah, it is. Shout outs, to, shout outs to Green Tunic. And, um, no, I'm hoping I'm gonna get hit here. Um, okay. And, yeah, we have to get the feather back, though, to continue any further here. So we have to do these hide and seek shenanigans again. Um, it's customary to spam Resident Sleeper during, during that section. So, chat, if you wanna hit it, then this is the time. Shovel equipped for this part, so you can uh, you can dig if you want to, but you'll probably dig up a Potobu Tower, which will shoot missiles at you. Yeah, like if you're not having the hard ring, you can try to dig for some hearts here. Um, but yeah, since we have the hard ring, hearts are not an issue at all. I rather try to clunk along with the rhythm. My hands only want to mash there though, if I try to do like a rhythm pattern there. <laughs> yeah, you said it. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> So we got a feather back, that way we can continue again uh, to like this section here. Um, we're gonna go into the temple again through this underground section and we're gonna get the third season, which is gonna be spring. I like it that you get like the upgrades to the rod quite early in this game compared to Arc of Ages where you get like the last two and only after Dungeon 6. So the deal with spring is that uh makes, uh, <laughs> I don't know why it does this, but it makes flowers bloom and you can jump in the flowers and they will shoot you up onto, like, cliffs and things like that. And it also makes, um, stone mushrooms turn into mushrooms that you can pick up. No, None of this awful. really makes any sense, but... <laughs> fall no, makes stone mushrooms mushroom mushroom. all happy now. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. It's fall. It makes the, the rock, uh, flowers bloom into yeah. regular flowers. The rock flowers and the jump flowers bloom. I went for swagness for that uh, jump there, but I messed it up. It's really tight. So we get one of the few glitches slash scripts in this game. Shoutouts to... Who did find this? Was it Seamaster? I think it was Seamaster, yeah. Yeah, shoutouts to Rooster Clip. Not Rooster Skip in this game, but Rooster Clip. So we can grab the rooster from that point there. I guess it only works in the Japanese or the US version though. I tried this on the European version, it didn't work for whatever reason. Maybe they fixed it. And it's possible to soft lock your game if you do that, but I forget oh, what yeah. the circumstances are. You have to change it to spring unless you're standing before stone flowers here. And we got Mush! Way! Mush. Mush lovers, this is your time to shine. Mush's deal is that he can fly. And that's, that's the only important thing about him, really. You can't fly over water, though. Yeah, because, yeah. He does he, like he water. He panics and just drops. Yeah. 
And also, I find it really unrealistic because his wings are so small. <laughs> it's like... Very powerful wings. Yeah. Magic wings. So we're gonna it's do really another save there. You can Sorry. buy Boosh's flute in the shop, um, in the town if you get enough uh, rupees. But then, if you try to use it before you actually get Boosh the conventional way, it doesn't work. It yeah. just doesn't work in this area of the game. Your flute doesn't work in here. Shoutouts to ever, whoever gets uh, sub 10 enter D4. It's a really long uh, split here between the dungeons. Oh, yeah. And we got like. In a bit, we're gonna enter up Dungeon 4, and then we got like one of the best menus I routed throughout this dungeon, throughout the, my menu routing. I'm very proud on that one, so gonna gotta 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 calm this. Uh, gotta, gonna see this in a bit. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, good Marvin and RNG. If the Marvin spawns below you while you drop down here, you can like basically die because you, it's just you can menu. easily take three hearts of damage. Yeah. And also enjoy. Most people really love the Dungeon 4 music. The Dancing Dragon Dungeon is what it's called. Oh, yeah. So, upcoming, uh, best puzzle in the game. Oh, yeah. If you love to push pots. <laughs> Who doesn't love pushing pots? Shoutouts to Dren. I just took his strat and was thinking, okay, that has to be like the fastest way. <laughs> he doesn't mess up his movement though. <laughs> and we got the best menu coming up. I think it's right A, right A, right A, up B or something. Ah, one too much. Getting again the double inputs from my controller. I'm like just using that to kind of rearrange my menu so I can access the things I need most of the time a little easier. You won't accidentally pick up the flute again. Yeah, but if you're going too far, you pick it up either way. <laughs> That's why I'm bending my flute to the bottom of my inventory there. Also, in the next underground section, there's a neat little strat I sort of found. You just have to pause buffer when you enter that screen and look at the key's position. Uh, I think that should work. Oh, no, I didn't jump. Okay, now we have to wait for that platform to move here again. So there's actually a bug with these moving platforms. If you jump on the first frame that you land on them, you will jump straight up in the air and with no lateral movement. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. That seems like some test only shenanigans. Spikes multiple times due to that. <laughs> yeah. And we get some card action again. So time to breathe through. Relax your hands a little. when you dive, there's the animation, um, the text showing up. Yo, what do we have here? A key, nice. Something like that. In Japanese, of course, though. Oh, also Japanese. Like with most other games, we run the Japanese version just because text boxes are shorter. I'm gonna not use the seat here because I want to have exactly 11 seats entering that card.
Um, maybe you guys can say something about that mini boss. This is a uh, this is Agonim. I, I think he has a different name in this version, but uh, <laughs> the strat here is just you light both of the lamps, you find the uh, the copy that has the shadow underneath it, and that's the only one that's vulnerable. Yeah, so the lamps go out thing. after a few seconds. You gotta relight them to make sure you can still hit them. Yeah, so like a four cycle, I guess even tossed it doesn't get more than a four cycle. Shoutouts to our buddy and fellow speedrunner Toss. <laughs> he got like so many wild rookies. And this dungeon item is the slingshot. It works a lot like the uh, seed satchel that we already have, except it shoots the seeds instead of just dropping them. So we're going to use that to hit distant switches, light distant torches, uh, hit enemies, things like that. Gives a lot of the seeds uh, different effects as well, which is interesting. Gale seeds just send uh, enemies away. The Pegasus Seeds freeze them, like the Boomerang, and the Scent Seeds, Ember Seeds, do damage. So, we got some rooms where we need to use that and light up some torches, so bless RNG, we're not getting keys in our way. Okay, good. This can really ruin your run. I guess if you not get the switches done right, you lose 20 seconds, and that's really bad. <laughs> Shoutouts to Trent the Legend, who in his... Uh... Oh, his yeah. personal best, he got two keys in the way of the first um, lever there, and he still got it. Yeah, that's sick. Like, really, it's old world record. Shoutouts to Dren, man. He's a really good speedrunner. He was always also doing some sounds, you know? Like, I tend to do speed places, like... And he was also, like, <laughs> entering that room, and, you know, like, the keys got in his way, and he was like... You know? <laughs> he was just, so, <laughs> just freaking out there. <laughs> But he still got it, man. That guy's sick. Yeah, Jordan's amazing. Uh -oh. The fact that we found like six minutes of skip in this game since he stopped running it, and he's still like, if he came back to the game with uh, that world record as execution, like the previous yeah. world record execution, he could still beat the world record by three minutes. Yeah, something like that. I hope he gets back so he got like some more motivation to play the game. <laughs> stuff in here is pretty good. Let's hope I can get this jump right. Okay, should be fine. So it's like a safe setup to get all of these pits. Usually you're only supposed to jump over two pits in a row, but when you line up like in a two pixel window, you can jump over three pits in a row with a uh, Pegasus Seeds. And we got Goma coming up, so I'm gonna go for a six cycle here, I guess. So the casual strat for Goma is usually to destroy the claw that's blocking the eye, which is the weak point. But if you line up precisely, it's possible to just hit the eye anyway. So that's what you go for. And ideally, you get the kill before you run out of seeds, so you don't have to switch. Yeah, and I was bamboo to do that. With this boss just because I never actually knew you could break the claw when I first played this game. So for years, I was just struggled heavily with him just was trying to shoot through the claw. Also, it's possible to soft lock on Goma. Goma can oh, grab yeah. you and you can it just freeze you. Actually Stan my buddy Stan just recently showed me that. I didn't know that, <laughs> but yeah, if you get like bad timing down, it's can be it can be really nasty. Yeah, I don't think we figured it out why we figured out why it happened. I know Mighty got it and I got it. <laughs> just don't get grabbed, guys. <laughs> yeah, just don't get grabbed. So since we got the Gale Seeds by now, we're gonna um, warp to the Pegasus Tree and replenish our um, Pegasus Seeds here. So we're gonna have exactly 20 after that. And yeah, about Goma, like... Um, also noteworthy, um, you always have to, like, the the fight looked pretty easy, but actually you're, oh, sorry, 
up on menu here again. Um, you have to make sure to always stay like exactly two tiles away from him. Um, so he doesn't move sideways or some shit. Um, so uh, that's like the important thing to uh, keep looking for if you're going trying to go for a quick kill. Like a five cycle is the best you can get with that strat. Um, got a six cycle, so that's also pretty good. Oh yeah, if you see those uh, flying Link FNC emotes in the chat, that's what Link looks like if he gets grabbed. Yeah. That's a really cool emote. <laughs> Shoutouts to FNC for being back. Like, there's really no Twitch woman without Franco faces. You know, once, you know, back in the day when they changed the backbone and once the host button was gone, I was like, what the hell, guys? I can't use this anymore. I have to look more different streaming platforms. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, with like... Um, how were we actually able to progress here? Um, Got the bomb flower. Uh, yeah. But why do we... I was like thinking what new item did uh, need to get to actually access this area. Well, you, the thing is, you can actually do Dungeon 5 before Dungeon 4. Yeah, so I think there is only early, right? We need the, uh, the flipper. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can do these two dungeons out of order, but it doesn't save any time. So, we just do it normally. And yeah, we got the bomb flower, so we uh, blew up that wall and got the last season. So we, got, we now got the full power of the rod of seasons. And we can change seasons back and forth the way we want once we find a tree stone, of course. Oh, Jesus, really? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. It happens. So every time we also move upstairs, we're trying to jump here to just uh, maintain our movement speed, our normal movement speed. Yeah, jump over stairs, jump over grass, they both slow you down if you walk on them on the ground. Now we have to change it to fall to be able to pick up the stone mushrooms. And we're gonna throw the first one out. So we can pick up the second one faster because like there's only one mushroom depleting animation allowed to be on screen at a time or something, I guess. Yeah. You know. No idea why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's only for those mushrooms. Yeah. Probably had some sprite overflow issues, so they thought, okay, no, we're only gonna allow that animation once on screen. Yeah, like, programmers did a pretty good job when it comes to glitches, like, this game has been sort of completely disassembled by our boy Dren and he didn't find anything. Oh god. I think that was the menu. I really don't remember. I guess my menu route is lost now. Oh, jeez. Uh -oh. I don't reset that screen. God. So this is why it's nice to have the heart ring. Yeah. Like, that's always the thing. If I mess up my menu route, it all kills, like, my, uh, you know, it also messes me up when it comes to finishing the dungeons well, because, like, my menu route is so, sort of, like, also a cho choreography uh, to the game, you know? So the item we just got there was the magnet gloves. Um, and they have a couple of uses. They can push and pull things to and from Link, and they can push and pull Link to and from things. Nice little buffer jump there. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna do that on buffer, that's frame perfect. <laughs> yeah, so the way it works is that normally when you're pulling yourself towards something using a magnet, you can jump on the same frame you release the magnet, uh, but any slower than that, and you just fall in the pit. Oh. Getting 
some oh, extra seats there. That's good. Cool. Um, need some silence here. Oh god, top bottom. Oh god. Oh no. I go top bottom, I guess. Oh okay. Yeah, so maybe you guys can explain what just happened. <laughs> so in that room has yeah, four chat, four uh, four armos, which come to life when you come near them, and once you kill all of them, four chests appear that need to be opened in the same order that you kill the armos in order for the fourth chest to contain the key. Yeah, and you saw like the left most armos, they were kind of on the. Same position right there, so I didn't. I wasn't able to distinguish which I killed first. I guess, though, that my menu is still okay. I guess. I hope. I guess. Whatever. We're gonna see. Like, the beginning of D5 is also like some sort of down A, right A, up B, left A thingy. You know. menu rearrangement. So the blocks are salves and the balls are knobs, right? Yeah. If you noticed in the, uh, the previous room where we got the key, there were some spinning magnets. And for whatever reason, you yeah. have like a full second uh, after pulling yourself toward them, just walk on thin air. But only around those blocks. Oh god. Worst pattern. Yeah, so this boss can give you different patterns of how it moves around the screen, and they take different amounts of time. So, Bamboo got some bad RNG. Yeah, like he does the sideways moving thing, it always freaks me out. But, like, one additional cycle is not too bad, though. Let me just change the self here. Yeah, Jesus. Okay. Still have so many seats left. And spam seats everywhere I want. This section looks pretty cool if it's done right. Only if it's done right. Super cool. Yeah, Spiky Tiger from Secret of Mana. <laughs> yeah. Hardest boss in Secret of Mana, man. boss coming up. This boss is Dig Dogger, which was also present in Zelda 1, but uh, not quite the same here. What we need to do for this boss is to hit it with this big spiky magnet ball a few times, then it splits into mini Dig Doggers, and you have to... they scatter all around, and you have to also crush them with the magnet ball. Got a one cycle, that's pretty good. It was a slow one cycle, but still a one cycle because if you not kill them fast enough, they gather again and become the big dick dogger, and then it's gonna be all messy and everything, so you don't wanna have that. is that in Zelda 1, uh, one of the wise old men tells you that uh, Dig Dogger is like, weak, to, weak 
to some kind of noises, right? And then you have to kill Dig Dogger with the flute. Something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was weak to a certain kind of sound. Yeah. It was weak to the horror. And so in this like game, the kind of sound stuff. he's weak to is the <laughs> screeching <laughs> magnet gloves. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I also didn't mess up there by not full clearing the Pegasus Sea Tree. That's gonna be bad because then I'm gonna miss a lot of seeds. We'll see. Oh, nice. Hardest mini boss in all the game. The Moldorm. Okay, should be fine. Like this. Yeah. So we're gonna enter the section with 20 bucks and behold! Best music in all of the game. So this is why we got all those jewels earlier. Now we enter Tarm Ruins, where we get the level 2 sword. I just love the music, it's really great. It's like that mystic vibe. You guys want to explain the puzzle here? So the okay. puzzle is that, um, okay, so first we're going to get the Master Sword, not the Master Sword, the Level 2 sword, sword, the Noble Sword, um, and ordinarily this is the item that you go through the whole trading sequence to get, so you find this item, you give it to this person, it gives you this item, and you trade it to this person, etc., until you finally give a record player to a uh, Deku Scrub. And that scrub tells you that you need to change the seasons um, in order from coldest to warmest, uh, walking to the west every time to get the noble sword. But we already know that. We don't need your help, dick a scrub. <laughs> I really like that, how you don't actually need to go through the trading sequence to get the final uh, prize for it. Yeah. And then the, the puzzle is the same here to advance further into Tarm Ruins. You just change the season from uh, coldest to warmest, going in the order of left, down, right, and up. And that'll get you to the area where uh, Dungeon 6 is. Makes it a rather small detour to get the level 2 sword, which is which is being really handy with like I'm cutting parts here. Also, um, when we're talking about this part, I always have the discussion about people figuring out, uh, wondering about whether uh, fall is colder or warmer than spring. Right. Yeah, the the weather we're getting on the east coast of the U.S. right now is making a good argument for spring actually being colder. <laughs> Wait, is spring actually a thing in Germany? Bamboo, do you know? <laughs> Never heard of that. Uh, can I <laughs> enter a quick donation? Yeah, sure. Um, $60 from uh, Jonas... Fredrickson saying nothing, because why would he? <laughs> but he's bringing us closer to the next donation incentive, which is forcing Gymnast86 to do Fairy Hover during his, during his The Wind Waker HD any percent run, which definitely mm. will be fun. <laughs> so nice. get those remaining $40. Thanks. Sick Fairy Hovers in Wind Waker HD, that's like. It something you shouldn't miss. So yeah, I, I love that speedrun, love that trick. Oh yeah, it's notorious. So I got like a pretty cool strat here if I get it done right. I want some balls again. Balls are north. Okay, should be fine then I guess.
Yeah. So that's like five hours of practice, more maybe even more for that room to make it work that well. Really, no, sh I'm not. I'm not kidding. This room, like, it's more like most of the stuff you're seeing here. It's looking pretty easy and everything, but there are some pretty precise tricks there where you have to actually practice a lot. Tight jump there. Like to miss that, but didn't. So that's nice. Also, another advantage of the hard ring, just boost through that bomb there. I think I missed something up, but we'll see. <laughs> So this dungeon's item is the Magical Boomerang, also known as the Level 2 Boomerang. You'll notice we didn't get the Level 1 Boomerang, um, because it's not necessary for the speedrun. Uh, and to get that, you'd ordinarily have to do a dancing minigame, uh, which which no one likes, except for maybe uh, Leafeon. <laughs> <laughs> if you like dancing minigames, stick around for the Oracle of Ages speedruns. <laughs> There's the necessary uh, one in there. Mm -hmm. I think I screwed up on my new route now, so I guess I'm gonna go freestyle after that. But I got some extra seeds from uh, this, um, from those other guys, so that's ooh pretty neat. Um, from the almost, you know, like the guys that awake once you touch them. And so yeah, the deal with Magic Boomerang is you just throw it and hold the button, and while you hold down the button you can use the D-pad to control it. So that's why we all always stand still while steering around with Boomerang. I really hate messing up my menu route, but I'm sorry. I'm just a bit rusty. It's okay, I usually mess it up in D3. <laughs> yeah, it's like really neat to have a pre-planned menu route. Um, so it just like can don't have to worry about like the downtime part, so to speak, with a speedrun, so you can just more focus more about the run itself. Of course, it saves hell of time. Hmm. Oh, of course, he's camping at the bottom right corner. But nice. well, it's really good to get like some ex extra seats here because um, <clears throat> we get like some RNG puzzle after the next mini boss. Talking oh, yeah. about RNG. Quote-unquote puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best puzzle. Oh, yeah. We get awesome next boss coming up. You could, like, theoretically manipulate him, but it's gonna be, like, rather test only, I guess. Um, so yeah, the same boss appears in the Oracle of Ages, and because of uh, the context of that boss, they manipulate him. But we can't really do that in this game. It's just not convenient. So what you want him to do is run straight at you three times, but... What he's doing right now is he's circling around the outside and shooting projectiles. That guy was pretty good. Yep, that's fire. So like, I found some exit down from a nip, so he charged three times in a row at me at my wall break. <laughs> so that's pretty cool if that happens. But also not too big of a time loss if you get like some shen- if he does some shenanigans. So this is the puzzle. Yeah. So the quote-unquote puzzle is that you press on, you step on one of the buttons, it doesn't matter which one, and you have a 50-50 chance of spawning the staircase you need. So we got the right? that's kind of okay. Um... 
Yeah, almost got it. Whoops. <laughs> that boomerang didn't fly in the... Yeah, and we got a pretty cool quick kill coming up, but it's test only. <laughs> oh man, it's so cool. So this boss is yeah. Manhandler, which also shows up in Zelda 1. You have to hit the four flowers with the boomerang. And um, the deal is that the flowers don't appear when you're directly facing them, so you have to steer the boomerang around. So if this would have been RTA, I would skip the hard container now. Because like it saves three seconds and you don't really need it later, but rather play it safe for the sake of the marathon. I also like to I always like to quote Ren here. In his old world Reiki, when I got the instrument, he was like, 144. So close, yet so far away. <laughs> He was chasing the 144, which was like a really sick time back in the day when before he got the world record. Gonna refill the seeds and then go to the bottom tree here. Oh please, double inputs all over the place. Like my gamepad likes to do some weird double inputs from from time to time. Oh. I'm actually really consistent with throwing the boomerang between the two rocks there. It's kind of pixel perfect, but yeah, I'm rusty. <laughs> So yeah, we got also some RNG coming up uh, in the desert we, we are about to enter. Yep, so this is part of a multi-part kind of side quest where you have to uh, get um, a rusty bell in the desert, which is what we're doing right now. Jeez, and we have I'm to sorry. polish the bell. I really forgot to wait to push these things. Oh no. It two? It's a... Uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this, this happened to me in a D-Rust and it was terrible. I spent three minutes trying to remember what it was. Oh uh, no, that, that was wrong. I mean, I, I think I remembered it. I think two, one, two, and three. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. This is how you get world record in this game. Nice. Yeah, sorry, Jangler, I interrupted you. Yeah, so this is similar to the Star Ore we did earlier, um, where there are four possible locations it can be, and it's entirely RNG, but it's worse in this case, because if it's not the first location, we have to drop this skull that tells us um, if we're like hot or cold, basically, and use another Pegasus Seed. Uh, and... Second and third, okay, that's not bad. Fourth is bad. Second and third are bad, a lot better than fourth. Yeah, like the but getting it the getting the first is not only the quickest, but it also saves you one one Pegasus seat, so that's pretty cool. But I have enough Pegasus seats right now, so it's pretty okay. Thirteen seats, yeah, it should be should be enough. I want to have like eight entering the cutscene. We've got a pretty cool cutscene out coming up. Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta have to adjust it a little bit. Should be better now. Whoops. I was like rolling, rolling back a little bit with my, with my shell. No problems when you're not using um, a headset microphone. Who's opening a soda here? <laughs> oh, that's my squeaky chair. <laughs> okay. So you go to the desert, you get the bell, you be rude to the guy who repairs the bell, you give it to the pirate captain. Pirate captain. Yeah, and uh, I'm sorry. I like to do like some reason. some some voice acting here. Yo, captain, we're all ready to go. Holy moly, let's go! <laughs> it's like yeah. dumb crap, but I like to do it. And we pretty got much. a pretty cool cutscene. We like to call pirates sailing out of the PG-13 desert. So enjoy. You figure out what PG-13 stands for. Captain, we're almost out of the desert. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's what I imagine they talking. The music is pretty cool. Yeah, this is one of my favorite music tracks. In this game. Now, the dead pirates are seasick. They don't have organs, but they're sick to them anyway. Yeah. My wife was watching this and she was like, yo, maybe they wouldn't be sick if they would stop turning for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> and also the captain. Oh, mateys, I'm so sick. Let's go back to the shore. We go and luckily they um go to land and build this beautiful bridge so we can actually continue to dungeon seven ah oh twice game three times Okay, at least my seat didn't run out. <laughs> and we got, what is it called? Explorer's uh, Crypt? Yeah, yeah, the Explorer's Crypt. So we're in a tombstone right now. And inside that tombstone is a whole dungeon. army stuff. So, upcoming is a trick called Poe Skip. It skips a key and a mini boss fight. Like, mini mini boss fight in this dungeon. With some pause buffers, it's getting a little easier. Yeah, the, the movement for that skip is really tight. And if you fail it, you get sent back to the beginning of the dungeon. But even if you get it second try, it's still worth it. Oh really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually don't even know the route without post skip through this dungeon. The 
fool's jump, which I'm not gonna attempt. Yeah, shout out to Leafeon. Oh, he found that. Or is it like his strat he always does? I don't know, I think... He either found it or was the primary proponent of it. Because okay. I know Z-Master came up with the setup for it. Oh. Jesus, please. Oh, God. Yeah, this is D7. I really don't like D7. Oh. At least with the Heart Ring, you don't really have to worry about dying. Yeah. Because it can be pretty brutal without. Oh, yeah. Also, since I screwed up my menu route, I have Sword on B again, so don't get used to that, folks. You won't be seeing that often in my streams. Like, I really like my gamepad, but these double inputs, like, just at random occasions, they kind of are not appreciated. Oops. And we got Po number two, so we skip Po number one, and this is Po number two. He's also gonna try to fight us. Nice McNero jump shenanigans here. I hope I get it right. Shoutouts to Hope. That strat was uh, found by him. It's not lost. Yeah. Okay. I really struggled with that jump the last time I speedrun this game. Glad I got it. Uh, first try here. You use like the sword clunks to line up in a pixel perfect position so you can actually make that um, free gap tile jump. Because once again, you're only supposed to jump over two tiles in a row if you only have Pegasus Seeds and Feather. But look at that! We got a pretty neat upgrade here. Oh yeah. So this is the Rock's Cape, the upgrade to the Rock's Feather. And this combined with Pegasus Seeds lets us jump over like almost entire rooms so there are some tricky jumps that will be coming up later uh, including one very tricky jump <laughs> indeed indeed It happened to me once that they actually blew out all the cans here and I fell back to the entrance of the dungeon, so... Oh, no. Don't make that happen. <laughs> and if you got, like, a few seats left, you could spam seats here, but I have exactly 16, so that's the exact, so exact amount I want to have. Oh, but I dropped it too early. Shoot. You want to drop it a little later, but, yeah, now I have to roll with it. I hope I get it. That's already bad. Okay. Messed it up a little. Oh. Should be alright, though. So, hardest trick in the game here you just yeah. hold right, and you will fall to the right when you fall through the screens. It 
only works to the to the right though. You can't do it to the left. Oh, that was like actually the fastest way I did this yeah, room that, ever. That was amazing. <laughs> nice RNG here. Making up for my bad jumping there before. Always nice if you play bad and you get really rewarded by our good RNG patterns. <laughs> Once again, some safety items there on the, one of these pots. There's a fairy, but we don't really need it. We're, we're fine with the hard So this boss is also a Zelda 1 boss, Gliok. You have to kill both of the heads and then kill the body. Made much easier in, in this version as opposed to the original for the spin attack. Yeah, it was really funny when I started speedrunning this game. Like, some people which weren't familiar with Oracle Seasons watching it, and they were like, Okay, so dungeon number one is a dragon. Dungeon number two, look, boss looks like a dragon. You know, like, <laughs> most of these dungeons have bosses which look like dragons. And they were also like, here, okay, we have a two-headed dragon. And then in Dancing Dragon Dungeon, there's no dragon. Oh yeah, but like, guess what the final boss looks like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the the seeds of life is the name for that item. Interpret that how you will. <laughs> I also like this music. Oh. Yeah, so it's actually faster to slash your sword immediately after using the shovel than waiting for the shovel animation to complete. I don't know if it did it right, but looks whack. Um, yeah, also, you saw me doing like a jump there over like some large pits. Um, fun fact, when back in the day when I was playing this casually uh, as a kid, I actually didn't find out that um, that fall changes like leaves over some pits. <laughs> I never saw that, I never realized that, so I was like, okay, I have to make the jump. And you know, I, I knew I could jump pretty far with the Pegasus Seeds and the Rocks Cave, so I actually was able to make that jump on a Game Boy Advance, I guess. I played this on our original Game Boy Advance, Amazing. the one with the dark screen, and I got it. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> that jump is so hard. Once you learn it, it's not that bad, but learning it takes... <laughs> yeah. It took me many times. Yeah, it's just ti it's timing. I mean, like, it's with most speedrun tricks. Luckily, not too hard. Oh, I hate me being my menu route being messed up. And it's one of those things where I couldn't explain to someone how to do it. I just yeah. have the muscle memory for it. Yeah, right. Talking about muscle memory, got some rather precise jumps here. Hope I get them done right. Yeah, you know, easy every time. Nice. Especially that last jump there was pretty tight. Like, I really practiced that for probably also like three or four hours straight. <laughs> so, yeah, that yeah. one's... I think that's second hardest jump in the game. Yeah, after HSS skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, um, just to give you an idea on um, these things, they are looking easy and fun and everything, but actually they are, they are not that easy, so... If you want to take a shot at Ward Ricky, be my guest. Um, <laughs> I don't want to have a reason again to speedrun this game, so you do me a pleasure there by balking me. Um, yeah, so we got Dungeon 8, and I guess we can already start talking about some trick coming up. So this is a pretty game-changing trick in terms of the speedrun that was found um, last year by Flock. Shoutouts to Flock, you. Yeah, shoutouts to Flock. Uh, I hate your guts. <laughs> I no longer run this game because of this trick. Um, 
So this trick was actually in the TAS, and it was thought to be TAS only, uh, until Flock figured out you can do it RTA. All you need to do is perform two frame-perfect uh, inputs and time a bomb at exactly the right pixel and sub-pixel uh, position. So There's nothing to it, basically. Yeah, it's, it's free. <laughs> so... Uh, on the first try, it skips almost six minutes, so over half of this very long dungeon. And I think I'm gonna let Bamboo concentrate. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, damn it. I was pretty close up. No, okay. Messed up the sub pixels there. So let's drop down here again. So the reason Bamboo is falling in the hole, it's, it's not because he's bad, it's because he's resetting his sub pixels. So the game has 256 sub pixels for every pixel so that diagonal movement and things like that work. And you need to be on the right half of a sub-pixel for this trick to work. Okay, this should work. Nice. Some nice. setup issues, but second try, that's pretty good. Like, if you're interested, um, when I started speedrunning this game, I was always super psyched to get it first try. And I was like doing weird, you know, gongol noises like <laughs> so if you're interested in me uh doing that i, I find it ridiculous um uh, you should check out my youtube channel there i i made like a compilation of every run i got this trick first try before i got my world record yeah so in some games like um like the n64 zeldas you can actually buffer frame perfect in inputs you can't do that in this game you can't buffer a pause out of a pause yeah, so, I also heard that um, Nintendo 64 games run at 20 frames at a time, so yeah, with, you know, calling that frame perfect. <laughs> exactly, that's what I think too. That's that's three frame perfect, not one frame. Yeah, but much love to the Nintendo 64 speedrunners. I don't want to like get into a fight here. Yes, Krifo, I realized as soon as I said that that it, it was wrong. I meant, I meant the right <laughs> side of a pixel, not the right side of a sub-pixel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pixels all the way down. Yeah, so like this uh, dungeon did us not only skip lots of the... This skip didn't let us only skip lots of the dungeon, but also the mini-boss and the... Uh, also made us skip the hyper slingshot, hence the abbreviation HSS skip. Um, because obviously you don't need it for anything in this big game, or nor the game. Like it just makes you shoot, shoot three seats instead of one, but you don't need the additional seats being shot. Yeah, I think you need it for just one puzzle in this dungeon, and that's it. One or two in, the, in here where you need to hit three eyes at once. It's actually challenging. Mm -hmm. And he does a lot of damage, yeah. I think he does like three quarters of a heart or something. Or maybe a whole heart damage. Probably a whole heart. Yeah, it is a lot though. But yeah, like, you know, just pick up the heart ring, 47 seconds lost, but just bringing through more runs. Because you're not gonna die to some stupid mini boss or some shit. 
so got good RNG on the Wizard spawns, but not on this guy. No, <laughs> so the enemies can spawn that. right where you land when you get off the cart, oh, and there's nothing also, you can do about it. That's also really interesting that one skeleton warrior, he just like got rid of <laughs> He just dropped into the pit there. Yeah. Nice game. Yeah, you can also equip to your sword here, but I'm rather like trying Nice, but didn't look rather very good there. Um, yeah, like the boss of the last dungeon age is actually rather easy. I was quite disappointed by that, actually. Let's hope I get him done right, though. Yeah, this boss is very free if you just do a consistent setup for it. Shoutouts to the mandatory eight park container. So if you don't hit that bus enough times right after it uh, attacks in the middle of the screen, it'll run away from you, and it's it's pretty hard to <coughs> get to it and hit it with a sword so that it will um, go back to a place where you can hit it. You can lose a bunch of time doing that. Can you guys actually see a time or something? I'm really curious because this run is not that bad yet, I guess. Right now, you're at a time of 141 flat, pretty much. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Guess we can do this underestimate, I hope. Yeah, and we're already on our way to the final gauntlet leading to the last boss fight which is also consisting of three phases first we go to our body macro tree you remember him kind of grown with every essence we collected and now he gave us like some round ball what was that like some essence or some shit i'm sorry it was the maku seed no maku seed right we don't know why he didn't just give it us give it to us off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> There's no actual like ink in me explanation for that. It's like you Maybe forgot. We just or... don't understand it because it's in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> he is awful forgetful at the beginning, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was the excuse. Yeah. <laughs> like, oops, I forgot to give you this. The essence strong... is jogged by memory. <laughs> And we need the Maku Seed to actually enter this area. If you're entering, kicked out again. But now with the Maku Seed and all eight essences, which are appearing right now, um, yeah, you can um, make like the fog or whatever it is, which is keeping us out, make go away. And here, here you get like three cutscenes in a row. Yeah. Twin Rova shows up. Lucky we don't have to fight her now. <laughs> yeah. I only have to do that. So, later. this game and Oracle of Ages can be linked together. So, if you start a game with a password you got from uh, finishing the other game in this series, you can do a linked ending where you fight Twin Rova and Ganon and rescue Zelda, who doesn't even show up in the. Uh, in the unlinked runs of the games. Shoutouts to the hands. Like, I would have gotten a 141, but I got grabbed by those hands at this phase of the game. So free world, Ricky. Just don't get grabbed by those hands. Oh, worst pattern again. Shoutouts to Dren. In his world, world Ricky. Three times the pits in a row. Oh no. Okay, well, this should be it. This is the good pattern here. And we throw another bomb, and bye bye. Oh no, I want to have sword on A for that fight. Ah, and then we get Onox. So, in the first phase, he's just like um, trying to throw his ball at you, and the second phase, he's using Din as a shield, and you're supposed to use the Rotter Seasons to throw away, but. I'm just gonna use that to damage boost through his shield and do double hits. Yeah, 
and it takes seven spin slashes in each phase. So, I was using Din as a shield, but um, I'm just gonna take the damage and do double hits. Yeah, the interesting thing is that, so the boss has iframes when you hit it, but because of the, like, getting zapped frames that you get when you hit Din, uh, the boss's iframes go away and it can take a second hit. Oh, actually, we've got time coming up in a bit. You guys call time on the last hit, right? Okay. So this is Dragon Onox, jump on the claws, and just jump back and forth between them, slash the jewel in his head. And you need eight of these. Oh. <gasps> nice. Almost didn't make it up there. And we got... Time. I called it myself though, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good uh, Dragon Onyx fight. Yeah, that was. I like it accidentally managed to stay up on his claws there. Um, the one time where he was lifting up his claws where he usually dropped down, so that's pretty neat. I wonder what the final time was. So, so the final time actually was a 145.28. That's pretty good. Not That's bad. pretty good. I can live with that. Dear Bamboo, you've started off our marathon and you stayed underestimate. Job done. Good job. Nice. Nice. You get, you get a cookie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, some quick shout outs to the Art Club Seasons uh, community. Um, first, and, first and foremost, uh, our buddy Mighty Mouth. He. Uh, I submitted this game to Summer Games, Summer Games Done Quick 2018, and his run got accepted. So this is gonna be like really big event uh, again. So best of luck to our buddy Mighty Mouth to um, showcase a cool speed run, uh, a cool speed game here, being Oracle of Seasons. Um, shout outs to Dren, which was like a huge um, inspiration and a huge guide with his old world recce because that actually, like most of the stuff you saw here, the speed struts, the optimizations is his work. Shout outs to Dren CO for the good, for the amazing tutorial. Shout outs to Z Master who, the RTA if shout outs to Flock, you're for finding the RTA HSS skip in the first place. Shout outs to Jangler, shout outs to Surreal Guy. Shout outs to El Tristo. Thank you guys so much for commentating as well. Shout outs to everyone else from the Seasons community. I forgot accidentally. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, much love. Um, I'm really proud to actually pick up the speed game and I'm glad to be a part of this amazing speedrun community. So peace and love. Indeed. That's some great kind of word to end. 